What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we are checking out the new Samsung Galaxy A32 5G. Yet another new A-series device from Samsung. This one, of course, replaces last year's A31. And this time around, we get a new design, some upgraded specs, 5G support, obviously, and a few other notable changes, both good and bad. There's a lot to talk about here, so I won't waste any more time. Let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what this phone has to offer. Now, right off the bat, it's not too important, but for some reason, Samsung completely redesigned the package for this A32. We've seen other new 2021 A-series devices launch already with this familiar box and artwork like the A12. Not sure if it's region specific or just a fresh new look, but I thought that was a little interesting. Sliding off the sleeve, the first thing we get is the usual little packet stamped with the Samsung logo on the front there. And inside, there's a booklet of instructions, as well as the clear rubber case to protect your new phone. Nothing special here. It's pretty much the same slim, flexible case that other A-series phones have had, but it's still nice Samsung decided to include one with this new phone. Digging a little deeper here, we get just a couple more accessories. At the very bottom of the box is where your SIM ejector tool can be found. And for the charger, this phone ships with a 15-watt power brick and USB-A to USB-C cable. And while it's great that the charger is included in the box at least, this is the fastest supported charging setup for this device. So with all that stuff out of the way, here is the new A32 5G once again. And you can see that I got mine in this violet color, which looks pretty awesome. And in fact, that's actually the description Samsung uses in their color choices for this phone. There's awesome violet, awesome blue, awesome white, and awesome black. So instead of prism or phantom, we get awesome this time around. The price for this thing right now seems to be around $300. I believe it should come down closer to $250 as more and more retailers get it in. It's also likely going to be available here in the U.S. and around the world. And if you guys are interested in doing some comparison shopping, I'll leave some links down below in the video description to all the deals and discounts for this phone. So if you're even vaguely familiar with last year's A31 or really any other higher-end A-series phone, I think you can tell right away that this device did receive quite the redesign. Up front, not much has changed. The A32 is a slightly larger 6.5-inch device. Last year, it came in at 6.4 inches, and the design and setup with the screen is sort of similar. The camera notch has changed shape. It's now that V-shape rather than a teardrop. Not really a big deal though. And you still get noticeable black borders all around with a decent sized bottom chin. Unfortunately, this phone seems to have a slightly lower screen to body ratio, around 82% with just slightly thicker bezels. But all in all, the front of this thing looks about the way you'd expect. Around back though, this is where everything changed. The A32 5G is still an all plastic smartphone, but the housing and frame and even the camera design are all totally different. The back plastic is a smooth, single color, no pattern, no rainbow finish, no texture, just a slight glossy look but it definitely doesn't mimic glass. And in fact, to me, at the touch feels maybe a little less high quality than some other plastics used on previous A-series phones. And in fact, compared to the other new 2021 devices like the A12 and A42, this A32 almost looks like it doesn't fit in at all. It's really a completely different design and finish altogether, so that's a little strange. Along the edge, you get this color-matching polished metal-like material that feels pretty good. And paired together with the back cover, this phone almost has that sort of ice cream sandwich looking design. It's squared off, it's very boxy, there's no taper or curve, and you kind of see where that metal frame and back plastic come together. All in all, it's just a totally different housing design than we've seen before. Pair that with a complete new camera module, and I think you can see why this phone looks so different. There's no real bump or square set up here. The lenses and sensors and flash all sort of stand on their own. There's a little tiny bit of an edge along the three lenses there, but basically not much of a bump or bulge at all. And while it does look a little weird compared to most other smartphones on the market right now, I actually think this design makes total sense. There's no wasted space and the whole rest of the back is totally flat. Taking a look around at everything else, on the left side you've got dual SIM and SD card support, which is nice to see. On the right side there's the usual volume buttons and the power button, which now doubles as the fingerprint sensor. Across the bottom, a headphone jack, USB-C port, and single speaker setup. And this to me sounds like the rest of the A-series speakers. Here's Here's a quick sample so you can get an idea. To me, 
And in regards to that fingerprint sensor, this is definitely an interesting change. The A31 had that in-display setup. This power button combo, while maybe not as fancy, is kind of nice. It's fast, it's easy to use, and obviously very convenient. And I'm not sure if you can classify this as a total downgrade necessarily, but there's actually a lot more going on with this display, which I'll talk about in a second. There's also a face unlock, of course, that you can utilize, and that too seems fairly quick as well. So let's actually talk about the screen now, because out of everything on this phone, this is probably the most controversial change. Last year's A31 had a phenomenal 1080 resolution Super AMOLED screen. This new A32 5G has a 720 resolution TFT LCD panel. It's objectively just a way worse setup in every way, and this is really disappointing. We're down to just 270 pixels per inch on this six and a half inch screen. Couple that low resolution with not so great viewing angles with the slightest tilt or turn, and you've got a viewing experience that in my opinion just feels super cheap for where this phone is positioned in the lineup. I don't really understand Samsung's thinking here. It seems like all these manufacturers are downgrading their displays in some form or another this year, but this is far and away the worst, most offensive downgrade compared to the previous year's device that I've seen yet. Is it like a terrible experience to watch content on this thing? No, of course not, it's fine. But if screen quality is even even the slightest bit of a concern for you, this is probably one of the least impressive setups you can buy on a mid-range device this year. And I just don't really get it. This is what you're looking at when you use the phone. And Samsung used to offer insanely good value with their displays on these A-series phones. It honestly was one of the selling points. This time around, the screen may very well be the biggest factor that turns people away from the A32. Now, fortunately, inside, I think this phone offers enough in the way of specs where you you can still make up a bit of value. You get the relatively new MediaTek Dimensity 720 5G chipset paired with the Mali G57 GPU, a ton of configuration options, including four, six, and eight gigs of RAM, and 64 or 128 gigs of storage. And surprisingly, this phone already ships with Android 11 and One UI 3. So you do get the latest and most up-to-date Android and Samsung skin. This is all really great out of the box. The phone is fast, it's fluid. One UI 3, in my opinion, while certainly is a minor upgrade, does still offer a lot with optimization and and subtle tweaks to make it feel fresh. And it's this solid software and user experience that almost makes up for the terrible display. While you don't get that mid-range Snapdragon processor some other $300 to $400 phones might have, I think what you still end up with here is plenty capable. Some initial gaming tests here show that this phone can certainly handle it all, and after having a dozen or so apps up and running, there hasn't been a blip or a hiccup yet. I'm obviously gonna put this phone to the test a bit harder for my full review, but I think there's a lot to work with here. Also, like the name suggests, this phone is 5G capable depending on your region and your network. Right now, at least, it's also technically the cheapest 5G Samsung device, at least until next month's new releases. So there's that to consider. Not sure if it's a selling point necessarily, but at least something to think about if you're on that 5G train. And one final note, there is also a non-5G version of this phone with a MediaTek Helio G80 processor instead. So depending on where you live, you might have access to either device. But initially, at least, performance-wise, there seems to be a lot to like here with this phone. Also, powering this A32 is the same 5,000 milliamp battery. That's a really big size, and I think paired with the subpar display, a newer processor, and updated and optimized software, you can easily expect this phone to be a two-day device, likely without a ton of 5G use at least. I'll certainly put that to the test in my full review, but this is definitely going to be another long-lasting mid-range device for those of you who want to stay away from the charger for as long as possible. The downside, like I said, is just the slow supported charging speeds, but if you only have to juice up once every couple of days, it might not be so bad. Finally, in regards to the camera, this is kind of a mixed bag, actually. Hardware-wise, there's only one noticeable change over last year. The main lens is the same 48 megapixel shooter. The ultra-wide also remained unchanged, an 8 megapixel lens. 
the five megapixel macro is still there, but the depth sensor drops from five megapixels to two megapixels. So that's kind of interesting. And the selfie camera has changed as well. It was a 20 megapixel lens. It's now a 13 megapixel lens. Capability wise though, I think there seems to be about the same, maybe a little more offered with the shooting modes and features compared to last year. There's 4K video recording, night mode, a few other random filters and add-ons. The 48 megapixel mode is there and a handful of other little things too. Nothing huge though, it's still mainly the same sort of setup we've seen before on these A-series phones. There does seem to be more zoom capabilities, which is interesting. Up to 10 times zoom is now an option that's highlighted on the phone itself. And in practice, I think the A32 produces a decent looking shot at first glance. There's good color, decent detail with portrait modes on the front and rear. There's nothing that stands out to me right now that looks too bad. I think this is pretty much the same sort of camera setup and capabilities we've seen on the other mid-range A-series phones before, but I'm looking forward to taking more pictures and videos here soon to get an idea of what this phone can do. I am curious to see if that new processor maybe allows for a bit better image processing in the end. All in all, this new A32 5G isn't exactly a spec for spec upgrade over last year. And in fact, in some capacity, it is technically a downgrade. I really still can't get over that display. The specs and added 5G support and fresh new design are all kind of enticing though. But what do you guys think about this phone? Is it something you're maybe considering right now or are you waiting on something else? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.